With a basic risk-return relationship, we are able to graph the relationship between risk and return and cap M over this notion of a security market line, okay? So as you know, that there is a trade-off between risk and return, and now we can just put this down in a graph. Along our horizontal axis here is going to be beta, right? That's our, our risk. And along our vertical axis, we're going to have R, which is our required return. And this is going to be denoted in percentage points, okay? We are going to have across here a horizontal line, okay? A dashed line running across here, which this is our base here. And this is the risk-free rate, okay? Regardless of what beta is, regardless of how risky an individual stock is, the risk-free rate remains constant. Okay, now when we're looking at this, I just want to make sure that we're on the same page here, is that we're looking at the return on the risk-free rate plus beta times the market risk premium. Okay, so the intersect here, that's our risk-free rate, is this entire area down here on the bottom. Okay, and then we're going to have an upward sloping line that looks something like this. Okay. And we will put a couple points on here. Okay, so we have a beta running between zero, right? At our horizontal axis, if I have a beta of zero, that means the return on that particular stock is going to be equal to the risk-free rate, which is where this intersection point is here. And then we're gonna be moving along between 0.51, 1.5, and two. If we have a beta of one, that means that the return on that stock should equal the market, okay? So we can trace this up to the security market line. That is what this line is up here. That's our security market line, okay? And so what this is right here is that this is going to be a market stock, right? This is what we're gonna call an average stock, okay? And just assume here for a moment, we're going to say that the, um, the market risk premium, okay, the market risk premium is going to be equal to 6%. So at this rate right here, at, this, at the beta of 1, our market risk premium is going to be equal, our risk premium on I stock, right, just this stock that we're looking at, security market line for I stock, is going to be 6%. Okay, if we look at the 5%, what is our risk premium here going to be? Well, it's going to be 0.5 multiplied by 6%, right? So that risk premium here is going to be at 3%, okay? And so that means that we have here, this is what we would consider a low risk stock, okay? because it has a required return of under the market. It has a beta lower than one. So when we look at that right there, is that let's say we have a risk-free rate of 5%, okay? The risk-free rate is at 5%. So that means that our low return stock, right? We have a risk-free rate of 5% is going to be at 8%, right? So because we have the amount that we have down here, which this amount right here, right? This is the risk-free rate. And then we add on top of that, that risk premium, okay? So we have the low level risk, and so that means we have an 8%. We then also follow across from the market, okay? And we have an average or market return stock it here is going to be 5% plus 6%, so that's gonna be at 11%, okay? And then we can trace this up and we can look at a high risk stock. Let's say we're looking at one with a beta of two, okay? What do we think this risk premium right here is going to be? It's going to be equal to our beta of two multiplied by our 6% risk premium. And so that's gonna be equal to 12%. So our risk premium on a beta of two is 12%. So we have our 12% here, plus the 5% on the risk-free rate, means that we're gonna have a risk on a high, excuse me, a rate of return on a high risk stock is gonna be 12% plus 5% is going to be at 17%. 
okay? So the thing that we can look at here is that as we trace along this security market line is that essentially is that we can pick a beta depending on what our the risk premium is we can pick a beta and we can follow that beta up to the security market line and that's going to tell us what we should be willing to pay for the stock what our required return on that particular stock is okay so as we move along that is that every every stock should be along this line okay now the security market line can change it can adjust and we'll talk about that in, in the next lecture. But the important part that we take from this one here is that as we increase, right, as we increase our beta, that means we are increasing our risk. What is happening to our required return when we increase the risk? That required return is rising as we see that the space between the risk-free rate and that security market line does get larger.